If you guys are on the gym scene or you like to work out, anything like that, you probably already know what this is. You probably already have one, two, maybe even three of these things. Before we do the unpackaging and I show you the actual product, we go over packaging ideas, ways that we can improve this product, differentiate this product. I wanna dive in and actually look at the numbers because I've used these for years. And I was shocked when I realized how much revenue that this company is actually doing in total, but even just on Amazon. I mean, this company is doing seven figures, high seven figures, low eight figures on Amazon alone. So it's absolutely crushing it. And I can't believe that they're doing this type of volume, this type of numbers, most importantly with just one product. So what I want you guys to get out of that is, guys, for those of you who are getting started and you wanna grow a seven figure business, you have dreams of growing that business to maybe an even an eight figure business, you don't always need 100 products, 200 products, 300 products. You don't need dozens of products in huge warehouses. All you need is a good idea, a good product, and some good marketing, which is what we cover on this channel. Welcome back to Seven Figure Product Series. This is the number one spot if you wanna learn how to start an online business, how to start a brand, how to start an online Amazon business and grow a brand the right way. What we do during this series is we analyze some of the top selling products in the world in some of the biggest businesses in the world. And what we do is we find out why are they selling? How can they sell? How can you get into markets like this? How can you develop, improve, market, and so on and so forth, these different products. So today I have a very special product for you. For those of you who've been following me for a while or have been around on the channel, you know at the AMZ formula, our slogan is you're only one product away. Well, this is an eight figure company, several hundred employees here in the US, and they all started with one product. Now, quick disclaimer before we dive into my computer and we go over the metrics, this isn't a product that I'm saying, hey, you should go out and launch this product. Matter of fact, this product is kind of seen as an industry titan. They have a monopoly on this market. So there's ways that you could differentiate this product. There's different products that you could uh, generate or create that are similar to this product, but I wouldn't personally recommend that you go out and do this. This is for information purposes only. So you can see how the branding works, how the business works, and we can really dive in and show you just how the business works in general. All right, so here I'm using the Chrome extension um, on Jungle Scout. And when you type in blender bottle, you're gonna see um, all of these popping up. Again, underneath brand, this is how you can tell the different brands that pop up. And over 90% of these products and these results that show up on Amazon are all blender bottle. Up here at the top, if we click any of these, remember guys, it will change the order chronological from ascending to descending order. I've already kind of did that and you can see that the number one is the classic V2 or version two shaker. They're doing on average $569,000 per month. So on average gross, they're doing around $6 million per year with this one line of product. Now on that, let's just say half a million dollars gross, they're probably seeing around a 20 to 30% profit margin. So they're probably seeing, let's say 100 to $150,000 profit to play it conservative and to play it safe. This could be definitely higher as they are ordering in bulk and we really don't know what's happening on the internal side. Here on the channel, we talk about different ways that you can improve and increase your margins, but I wanna be conservative and realistic. 100, 150,000 with one SKU, one variation is amazing. And I've done some research and it looks like they have licensing with Disney and Pixar and Marvel and all these different huge brands. So that's another smart strategy. If you grow your brand big enough and that demographic for that product or your target audience demographic falls underneath a brand where you could possibly license it, licensing is a possibility. You could hire a licensing attorney and a licensing expert and they could reach out to these companies and find out, number one, are they interested in doing it? And if they're interested in exploring it, how much would it cost? So I want you guys to understand that. Like when you see products that have Spider-Man or let's just say Star Wars, those aren't always made by the companies. Now, sometimes the companies will roll out generic products and slap their brand on it because it has the higher margin, but what's actually more profitable for these companies are these companies to get paid based off of a licensing agreement. Now, the licensing agreement can be paid up front, it can be paid monthly, 
It could be off of terms like perpetuity, meaning the lifespan of the entire company or the lifespan of the product. It can be rev share. There's multiple different ways that you can structure this, but I want you to keep that in mind and keep that up your sleeve um, because this is definitely something you could do if you grow a, a ginormous company in the future. So here you can see guys, they have tons of different colors, tons of different variations, but it's all around that one product. Oftentimes people don't understand how to differentiate and exhaust a product. They'll change the colors and the size and the quantities. Those are all the easy differentiations. But what about the different licensing, right? What about the different styles? I see they have styles with pill organizers underneath it. I see they have styles that have uh, protein containers underneath it. I see they have gallon sizes and all these different sorts, but it's all around the same patent, the same design, the same style. You have potential of the product and the product development and the design of the product, and you also have marketing potential. These are the two big mistakes that I see people make when they're scaling. They have a product, they're getting some traction, they're making some money, and they're not exhausting the potential of vertical integration through differentiation of the product, right? Number one, the other side of it, number two, is they're not exhausting the marketing potential. So those are a few more hacks that you wanna keep up your sleeve. So now I've done some research, which I just think it'd be pretty cool to share with you. First and foremost, if you head over to blenderbottle.com forward slash pages forward slash IP for intellectual property, here you can see all the trademark and patent information that they have. So if you really wanna dive into this and understand how to read these reports and what they are and uh, look for these, you can go ahead and you can search all these up with the USPTO. You can also Google all of these uh, trademarks as well, right? Um, again, a quick hack, a quick tool, a free resource is Google Patents. Here I went into Google Patents and I typed in um, beverage shaker. So just type in these different keywords, beverage shaker, shaker bottle, right? All these different keywords until you find ones that look like exactly what it is that your product is. And you can start to identify these intellectual property, these different patents, the designers, who invented them, and so on and so forth. So this is an amazing resource because you can always, any type of intellectual property, you can always buy it, you can always license it, you can always partner with these people. So these are ways that you can think out the box. Plus, we don't wanna launch a product and be in violation of intellectual property. So a quick Google patent search to see if the product is patented is worth your while. And rest assured, if you see that your product is patented or similarities are patented or there's already patents pending, reach out to a patent lawyer, pay them their hourly rate. Usually we've seen between $100 to $500 per hour. It is worth spending that money and elaborating to them what your goal is, what your plan is, what your design is, and can we get around it without infringing intellectually? I know this is gonna hold you back some time and a little bit of resources in terms of capital, but this can save you potential headache in the future because it could be a lawsuit and even worse, right? Here you can see that uh, Florian Ingard has the beverage shaker cup, and here you can see he also has the uh, mixing element for food and or beverage shaker. So if you wanna learn more about these and you wanna read these yourself, go to googlepatents.com and you can look up Florian Engard or you can go ahead and look up beverage shaker or mixing element for food and beverage. According to grojo.com, it looks like Blender Bottle was founded in 2000 in Salt Lake City, Utah. It is a consumer grade industry and it looks like they're doing around $47 million per year gross which is amazing. They have over 188 employees and I've done the research on their products. It is designed in the US and manufactured in China, just like Apple and just like a lot of these other large companies that me and you are consumers from. So this is just in a poly bag. And guys, really quick, I want you to understand, and I say this so many times, your first packaging does not have to be your last packaging. Your first product development does not have to be your final product development. Look at Apple, you guys know I love Apple, WWAD, what would Apple do? Every single year for the last two decades, Apple has came out with new models, new versions. And guess what? We buy them from phones to computers. Every single year they make them better and every single year we usually buy new ones. So don't fall victim to analysis paralysis and think your first packaging, your first design has to be perfect. Because oftentimes when you're getting started, you're, you don't have that copyright. 
You don't have that trademark. You don't have that patent and nobody knows who you are. So if you make some mistakes, you make some adjustments, you make some changes, no one's really gonna know. This isn't really a giftable product. Yes, you can gift it to somebody who's into fitness, but it's not really a giftable, shareable, viral type of product. So here they may be focusing on cost savings. You have to do your due diligence on the type of product that it is that you have. If you're doing a high-end barbecue set or a high-end mixology set, those are highly giftable for men when it comes to that demographic. And that's something that you may wanna put some time, effort, energy, and resources into actual packaging because it's gonna increase the perception and it's more giftable. This is something that I've learned in my personal experience. Pretty straightforward product. We have the bottle here, right? So on the bottle, it looks like we have a little tag here. So there's no package stuff or nothing like that, just the poly bag. But on here, it just says uh, Blender Bottle Classic, which is the model. It says leak proof guarantee. On packaging and any type of inserts, it's super, super advantageous to have things that differentiate yours from everybody else, things that the consumers are gonna be looking for. So leak proof, I can tell you right now, in this industry, leak proof is probably a big pain point. People were probably concerned about you know, this not being attached or it leaking from here and I don't know, protein or shakes just getting all over their clothes or getting all over their car. So the first thing you see on this main thing is leak proof guarantee. So there's something about guarantee and there's something about hitting those pain points before they even use your product, right? So think about what pain points do your customers have and use that to the advantage when it comes to customizing your packaging and to your inserts. One of my products had um, dyes in them, right? And one of the biggest things were um, the dyes actually discoloring or dyeing bathtubs. So we were able to come up with a formulation where it wouldn't do that anymore, right? The perfect ratio, the perfect type of ingredients. And when we were able to make uh, claims that it will not stay in your tub, if so, we have a 100% money back guarantee, we actually increased our conversions and our customer satisfaction. Now on the back side of this, it looks like they have a recipe, um, orange dream shake, classic blender bottle smoothie. So this is a way to add value before you even use your product. I absolutely love this. I talk about this on the channel and inside the AMZ formula, you can do this in forms of ebook, you can do this in forms of actual physical, tangible, legible stuff like this, like little cards, little inserts. They're adding value before you use the product, number one, and number two, they're actually giving you different ways to use the product because they know that if you use the product, you'll be a customer longer. If you use the product and you enjoy it, you'll be a long-term customer and you're less likely to actually refund or want a replacement on this product. So when people are buying your stuff, make sure number one, they know how to use your stuff. Number two, try to add value to their lives before they use your stuff. And number three, do whatever you can to combat those returns. So this is ingenious right here. This company in the last 20 years has obviously done over a billion dollars in revenue. They're at $50 million per year, absolutely crushing it. So I'm constantly looking for ways and hacks and tips and strategies and tactics that these large eight figure, nine figure companies are doing. And that's why I love this series because we get to learn together, right? Now on the back side of this second card, it looks like they just have some important information like warning about choking hazard uh, pieces and the plastics and so on and so forth. Looks like it talks about their trademarks, their patents, it has their hours of operations, their customer support, their email address, their social media, and it looks like it has four big features. Number one, leak proof guarantee. Number two, adjustable loop right here. Number three, dishwasher safe. And number four, BPA free. So these are all features that they want their clients to know about. And probably some of them are pain points that they want to address so, so that their clients aren't thinking to themselves, hmm, I wonder if it's BPA free, right? I'm sure clients were returning this because they couldn't determine if it was BPA free. And that meant a lot to a specific demographic of clients. So now they portray it on the actual packaging. So think about, what are the pain points that are triggering returns? What are the pain points that different clients um, have confusion about, have doubt about? What are your other competitors getting negative reviews about? And put this on your packaging, put it in your package stuffers so they know that you're doing the opposite. Anything that you're doing to differentiate yourself from the marketplace or make your product better than everybody else's, I'm an avid fan of making it big and bold on my packaging, on my listing. Only one on Amazon, best of the best, new and improved. Only blank on Amazon to have blank. It has this adjustable handle, you can put a clip to it, 
You can attach it to things. I'm sure this is a part of their patent. You have the flip up thing, which has really good suction. This is probably patented as well. This feature is probably how they're able to guarantee that it doesn't leak. Um, that and the twisting mechanism is really tight. Um, on top of that, if you open this up, there is the world renowned technology, the, the apparatus or this actual little ball that actually blends up the fluids or the powders or whatever it is that you're putting inside your drinks. This is patented for sure. If you actually look at the wrapping, it has the patent number on here. There's some generic people, but they cannot do a circular uh, sphere style design like this. There's some that are automatic. There's some that are battery powder. There's some that are like squares but they are the leaders in the industry for this. If we look on the side, it has some measurements, which is adding more additional value. Obviously you wanna measure stuff. Obviously you wanna know how much water you're drinking or protein you're drinking, so on and so forth. Other than that, very simple branding. Guys, your branding doesn't have to be crazy, right? Blender bottle. It's a bottle that has a blending feature. When you're starting out, nobody knows who you are. Nobody cares. They want your product. They want a good product at a good price. They want a good experience. You have time to change your name. You have time to change your branding. You have time to change your product and your packaging. So focus on that product. Don't compromise whatever your search criteria is and go all in because this is a marathon. Building a real online seven figure, eight figure, nine figure business. Hey, I wanna say thank you for watching the seven figure product series. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have and you stuck to the end, do me a favor right now, smash that like button. That lets us know, our team know, and YouTube know that you enjoy this so we can do more of it. Also, if you love this, every single week we release new videos like this. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday we have new content. And every Friday at the time of recording this, we're going live where you can kick it with me and ask any questions that you have. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell next to it and drop a comment down below. Let me know what gem you got and let me know any feedback that you have. I read them all and respond to all of them. Remember, you're only one product away.